I think I've developed an unhealthy obsession with wool sweater vests because they are so dang comfy. It seems that cray cray is the new normal and 2023 is likely to be the same hand basket of fun. But hey, sewing is a necessary apocalyptic skill, so there's that. And another quite not as apocalyptic, but still necessary task is my end of the year sewing studio clean out and reorganization. This will help me get ready for some major studio changes that are coming later this year. I'm planning to tart up my sewing space, so stay tuned throughout the year for videos about that. As I sort through the scraps and try to declutter my space, I thought it'd be a good time to chat with you all. I'm sorting between larger scraps and itty bitty little tiny scraps uh, here. So let's just do this thing. So sewing is not just for grandmas or grandma age people like me anymore. Today, more people are learning to sew than since they killed off the home sewing market in the 1980s. It's a skill that can be used to create so many different things from clothes to home decor to accessories. And the best part is that it's super therapeutic and can help you relax after a long day. I've also looked at my own sewing as a way to be more sustainable. Instead of buying fast fashion that ends up in landfills, I make my own clothes and repair old ones. It's a win-win for both my wallet and the environment. Boy, that was bigger than I was expecting. I've also looked to my sewing as a way to be more sustainable. I think it's a curse that many of us have our tastes outstrip our wallets. <laughs> By buying things that needed mending, I could get better quality and totally rock the grandpa sweaters. I think I've developed an unhealthy obsession with wool sweater vests because they are so dang comfy. My sewing in 2022 was mostly for wearing during medieval reenactments in the Society for Creative Anachronism. A friend of mine, uh, my husband Squire, was getting knighted, so I coordinated a group of people who were making him some new clothes. We made him some tunics, some under tunics, a mantle, several pair of pants. Basically gave him a new Norsky wardrobe. Uh, because we just love them so much. The Viking aged tunics were made of linen or wool and had silk embellishments uh, using reproduction fabric. I'll post the links below once I find them. Rectangular patterning of the medieval era makes very efficient use of fabric and is super easy to sew. And the patterning for the pants was new to me and I'm happy to say they fit very well. Uh, pants have always flummoxed me, but these turned out great, so whew! We got all of that sewing done and delivered to him, only to have him win the Principality Coronet Tournament the same day as he was knighted, so back to the sewing machine we went. This time it was Carolingian clothing. It's like, yay, I love me some Carolingian clothing. I made him a tunic of wool and reproduction silks, and his consort a lovely gown of linen and silk. So now we have a pretty, pretty prince and princess. After that sewing, I, I kind of crashed. We canceled our planned trip to the UK in 2023 due to the still high COVID numbers, which put a real damper on my mood and creativity. But if you're interested, I made a, his a video about planning my travel history bound wardrobe, which I'll link in the description below. Canceling the trip really put me into a depressive mood that really put an end to my creativity and motivation. But I'm going to put on my big girl panties and make the most of 2023. I'm not going to let all of that wardrobe planning go to waste. Um, you can expect to see more videos this year about my ongoing journey to create a 17th century history inspired wardrobe. So let's switch gears and talk about how my channel did in 2022. So on a positive note, because we should always eat dessert first because life is short and you never know when an asteroid might hit the earth and you'll never get to eat creme brulee again. And that would be a real shame because creme brulee is life, to be honest. Uh, the best thing about this channel is all of you. I'm really grateful for the time you spent watching me talk about sewing, clothing history, having ADHD, project planning, 
um, and building a history inspired wardrobe. It's been a lot of fun making these videos and it hardly even feels like work, except when I have to do my hair and makeup. I never really mastered the girly girl thing. <laughs> Too much of the farm girl, even nearly 50 years removed from the farm. Sometimes I feel like I need a team of wee fairy godmothers to swoop in and do my hair and makeup so I don't look like a banshee on a Saturday night bender. Or maybe I'll just uh, embrace the look <laughs> and make some witch core outfits to wear while slinking around the hedges and muttering vague curses against those responsible for modern garment sizing. So this is cool. I reached the milestone of getting a thousand subscribers this last year and I have a stretch goal of reaching 10,000 by the end of the year. It would be super helpful for you to share your favorite YouTube channel, mine of course, <laughs> with all your friends and family, um, the neighbor's dog, the cool teen circle, uh, the book club, and just about anyone else you can think of that uh, is into sewing and making their own clothes and costumes. And, and please let me know what kind of content you'd like to see this year because you guys are the boss. I also added some tech to my video protection toolkit and I have hopes of actually being able to put out better videos in the future. So give me a needle and thread and I'm in my comfort zone. Uh, give me tech and there's a very long period of puzzlement before I get comfortable. Uh, my fancy doctoral degree does me no good when I'm straggling with my freaking lavalier mic. Luckily, stubbornness runs in my family, and off the willing, you'll see better quality in the videos in the future. I've come a long way since I started the channel a couple of years ago. So let's talk about what didn't go so well in 2022. Uh, you might have noticed that I didn't put out a lot of videos in the last few months. Seems to be a trend for me. I have a hard time completing and, and uploading videos regularly in the fall. I'm not sure why, but it could be I just need the fallow time. I participated in the YouTube Costume Symposium the last two years, and that's been great for channel growth, but I seem to crash right afterwards. This is entirely self-inflicted because I try to make multiple videos for the weekend, and I didn't say I was smart. <laughs> Let's see what Let's see what else. Um, there were regularly scheduled live videos, and those were awesome. Um, you will hear me say this again and again, but you are really the best thing about this channel. Doing live videos is more real and fun and interactive. Let me know if you joined one of the live streams and what you thought of them. There's more coming up, so turn on your notifications so that you can know when I post a video. Something else, we got a cat this summer, or rather a cat got us. Uh, he showed up on our doorstep pretty near death. Uh, it turns out to be a deaf geriatric cat with bad teeth, bad breath, and a drooling problem. That's fun. Um, he wakes me up every morning, uh, sometimes with a polite ahem, madam, and sometimes screaming the screams of the banshee. He loudly announces when he's pooped, which is funny because he's deaf. Not so funny at 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> we love him so much, the dork. But our sleep patterns are disrupted and the time in the morning before we work when I usually do a lot of video planning and script writing is now hanging out with Frito, feeding Frito, brushing Frito because he can't be arsed to groom himself. Um, we figure our job is to just get, make him as comfortable as we can for as long as he's got. This boils get. <laughs> so what's coming up in 2023? My sewing process has always seemed to have a long period of ruminating and thinking about a garment and outfit before I start cutting fabric. Um, and the 17th century inspired outfits have been fully ruminated and marinated in my brain pan. The time period was new to me, so it's been really delightful to take on this challenge. I'll link to my previous videos in the description. I recently found Alabama Channon's work in applique and thought it would be a beautiful way to reimagine the silk sweaters of the 17th century. And this will likely be my first big sewing project because spring is coming and one can never have enough cardigans. 
Um, there's a pile of knit tops over there that I no longer wear, just waiting for the sewing machine. I also plan to make a linen kirtle and an underdress. Uh, smocking will likely play a role in these garments. I've, bit, I've become a bit obsessed with smocking lately and I'm itching to do the technique again. It's been a fair age since I pulled out my wee smocking machine. And another set of clothes I want to work on is historically inspired gardening clothes. I spent a lot of time in the garden and would totally dig some herbaceous, history-bounding clothing that can stand up to the beating that they're going to get. I have a ton of really bright cotton canvas left over from when I made chalk bags for uh, rock climbing. The yardage is really bright, but it can be dyed uh, to more subtle shades for the project. This will also give me an excuse to do more research on women gardeners and farmers throughout the ages. Um, if you have any leads on academic research, uh, let me know because the Yachas love research articles. Our COVID build project was a very labor intensive raised garden bed and fountain vaguely resembling a Roman garden. Uh, we ha have a make believe story that the garden is an old Roman villa in Francia that we are migration era Franks that took over the abandoned villa. Um, <laughs> the half acre yard that, that, that makes up the gardens here is made up of smaller areas and each with a different personality. You're going to find uh, historical plants sort of tucked here and there all through the gardens. Um, so maybe a Roman wardrobe would not be out of reason. What do you think? Do I need to make a Roman set of clothing and do a photo shoot in the garden? <laughs> On top of these two projects, there's going to likely be some new clothes for medieval reenacting because while I make a lot of clothes for other people, my own wardrobe is appallingly raggedy jaggedy. Uh, most of the videos around those sewing projects will be over on my medieval channel, Suvia's Letters. I'll link to it below. And when it comes to this channel, oh, I love this one. Um, when it comes to this channel, uh, my watchword for the year is consistency. I'm dropping back my range of projects to just do a few of the year. My ADHD means that consistency is pretty laughable, but I'm working on systems to help with that. Uh, for instance, I developed some checklists and some how-tos to keep my social media act more active. Because um, y'all are my peeps, and the community that we are building is a lovely place to hang out and geek out on clothing history. Uh, so you can join our growing community on Facebook, on Discord, or over on Ko-fi. We don't fight. <laughs> Unless asked nicely. <laughs> I'll be exploring uh, short form video more this year. Uh, my natural tendency is to make long video information, long information packed videos. And I don't have a lot of experience with short form videos. I'm not even on TikTok. Uh, but all the YouTube gurus say that short form is key. So I will be a lemmy <laughs> and learn how to do some smashing YouTube shorts probably reels, maybe TikTok, I don't know. I've learned that sewing is a journey, not a destination. There's always something new to learn and ways to improve your skills. And that's exactly what I plan to do this year. I'm, ex I'm excited to try new techniques, experiment with different fabrics, and maybe even tackle a few more advanced projects. I'm also looking forward to sharing my sewing journey with all of you and seeing what you guys have been working on too. So as I de-stash these scraps and other crafting supplies, let me know if you're interested in getting mystery boxes. I'd be happy to put together some grab bags and send them to you. Just cover the cost of shipping. So comment below if that's something you want. Um, but you have to commit to sharing progress pics of whatever you make because biatches love progress pics. Let's make the next year a great year of fantastical sewing whether you're a beginner or a seasoned pro, there's always something new to discover and create. So happy sewing everyone. And until next time, get vaxxed, stay safe, and I bid you joy.